Hi, my name is Will and this is my best friend Henry. We have been friends for 10 years. One day, Henry came to my place looking rather worried. He told me that his brother, John, who lives in another country, has not been texting him back for two days now. He wanted to visit him and wanted me to go with him so that he can check up on John. Normally, if it would have been any other friend, I would have told them to relax and wait a little while but I knew how close Henry is to his brother and they talked at least twice every day. So I agreed to go with him. I asked him to call his girlfriend too but he told me he didn't have her number and she is not responding on any of the social media platforms. Next day, we took a flight and went to visit him. When we reached his apartment, upon knocking, his girlfriend opened the door. Henry was confused and asked her about John. She looked worried and started to cry. She said, she didn't know who to ask and what to do but John has not returned ever since he went out with his friends. Why haven't you reported this to the police yet? We had a fight before he went out. I thought he was just ignoring me because of that. I sent you messages on social media, but you never replied. I was so worried the last few days that I hardly got out of bed and used my phone. We were still chatting when Henry froze. I thought he was having a panic attack. I tried to calm him down but he just sat very still. A moment later, he asked the girl to get him some water. When she got up to get it, he quickly took out his phone and took a picture and told me to run. I didn't understand what was happening but we ran out of the apartment as fast as we could. We took a cab and Henry told the driver to drive us to the police station. On our way over there, he burst into tears and told me everything. He said that he saw a human finger in the corner of the kitchen. He was sure that it was his brother's. He said that is why he took its picture to show it to the cops. When we reached the station, Henry explained everything to the cops with evidence. They immediately left for the apartment and caught the woman. We went back to our hotel and waited for any news. Henry then received a call the next day from the chief of police and was asked to come to the station. The chief then told him that the finger was unfortunately John's finger. Henry started to cry. We couldn't have anticipated what the cop was about to tell us. It sent chills down our spine. He told us that his girlfriend murdered him, cut up his body parts, cooked him up and fed him to the labor working on the building next to theirs. We were horrified and didn't know what to say. Finally Henry spoke. But why? Why would anyone do something like that to such a sweet person? The cop explained the reason behind the horrific attack. He said that the woman proposed to him to which he didn't agree. She thought that he is probably involved with someone else and so killed him. The only way she thought she could get away with it was by completely disappearing the body. She was successful. There was no trace of blood or anything foul. However, Henry had not seen the finger. It would have been very hard to trace the murder back to her. Even though Henry had little peace knowing that the woman was in jail for life but the whole incident left him different and depressed. The crazy lady still haunts him in his dreams.